Hey YouTubers and welcome back to my YouTube channel Master That English where we understand, analyze and interpret the important texts and concepts that may be part of your English curriculum. Our topic for today is a brief overview of the novel The Plague by Elbert Camus. This novel has been analyzed by the psychoanalytical perspective. So get your pens and notepads ready because... Here we go. Greetings everyone. I, Karishma Bisht, will give you a short presentation on mental sublimation, the anchor of survival in Albert Camus' work, The Plague. Before we delve deeper into the topic, it is important to understand the concept of sublimation. In simple terms, sublimation is the process in which an individual is able to channelize the negative energy into a positive form of reinforcement. Let's imagine a situation when suddenly someone out of the blue starts making a noise through a loudspeaker. In this situation, a person would not hesitate in expressing her negative emotion against the noise. Hi, I'll beat you up. On the contrary, a person could also channelize her negative energy by aggressively cleaning her whole house. I will clean up this house. Thereby resulting in positive reinforcement of the negative emotion. And this, my friends, is called sublimation. Hence, the aim of this paper is to study the effect of sublimation in adverse situations with reference to the novel The Plague by Albert Camus. At the onset of the novel, the citizens of Oran enjoy a collective engaging routine where they see a scope for fulfillment of their desires. This is because prosperity for these individuals is a power engaging phenomenon experienced by their conscious mind. These sentiments are reflected in the novel through the following lines. Our citizens work hard, but solely with the object of getting rich. Their chief interest is in commerce, and their chief aim in life is, as they call it, doing business. Unfortunately, this prosperity is suddenly disrupted by the death of rats that leads to an epidemic of the bubonic plague. In this situation, the dead rats become a symbol for stagnation as the hustle and bustle of the normal routine comes to a standstill. Hence, the break from the normal routine leads to the realization of the futility of life where man becomes a victim of the situation. So how can humanity engage in sublimation in such futile situations? In psychoanalysis, this question can be answered through Sigmund Freud's case study on the Renaissance painter Leonardo da Vinci. What's intriguing in Freud's study is that for an artist, reality represents a mundane monochromatic existence. As reality involves boundaries of society, rules and regulations that inhibit the growth of the artist's mind and eventually inhibit his desires. On the other hand, the artist's work represents a spectrum of liberation that allows the artist to engage in his creative pursuits without any fixed code of interpretation. This creative mental engagement is also noticed in the male protagonist of the novel, Dr. Ryu, who lives in the world of abstractions. However, the social institutions in the novel undergo disintegration as the past sources of sublimation become unimpactful in the present situation. This is because in the present 
such institutions represent a true picture of the present world that is repulsive and unacceptable. Hence, in these turbulent times, the only way to overcome the adversity is through undefined mental sublimation that helps to adapt with the stagnant situations and endure the never-ending general drama of brain. This is how Sisyphus is happy. That brings us to the end of the overview. To get a deeper insight into my perspective, click on the link on the description box to get a deeper access to my research paper. This is Mika Rishma. Until we meet next time. Take care.